Congratulations, you have chosen to migrate to Evergreen. Now what do you do? That is what the Evergreen tab is here to, to explain to you. This is the home page of the Evergreen tab. It's basic information about Evergreen, features, stuff about the OPAC. Down here there's this really short section about migrating. One note on cost of migration, it greatly varies library to library. These are very general estimates. You might be higher, you might be lower. It all depends on how your library is set up. Do you need new hardware? You know, how much support are you going to get? Are you in a consortium or alone? How many records do you have? Etc. 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 Just keep in mind they are estimates. We are not promising anything. Now the Evergreen tab is divided into the three sections: the migration process, technical support, and the Evergreen community. The migration process is really the main point of the website. It's supposed to give you some guidelines and make sure that you're asking the right questions and that you're considering everything you should be considering. So this is the first page of the migration process. It's you know, pretty basic information. You will notice in this section everything above this navigation bar is stuff that we've created. Everything below it are links to outside resources. So we have the migration process divided into, into six stages. Aside from evaluating and going live, and even evaluating is iffy, these stages are going to overlap. It's not like you're going to do one stage, finish it, and then start another. They're all going to overlap. Demo sites, you can be doing demo sites as part of your evaluation. You certainly should be doing data prep and customization while you're working on the on the demo site. We put them in the order that made sense to us, but it's open source. You can do it in whatever order you want to, but you really do need to decide which which one you're doing and clearly if you've gotten to this point you've chosen evergreen this page is for those who are I guess double checking or still considering or you're setting up your migration team as you know the first step in your migration this is the page for you demo site so down here we have the demo sites that are available through the main Evergreen website. Out of all the things I've learned from interviewing librarians who were in the process or had already migrated, it's you want to do a demo site. These uses tell you how important it is for you to have one, so just trust me and do one. Data prep, there are many kinds of data prep many of which are included in here. Really, the data preparation can take as little or as much time as you want it to. Some of it is weeding, which, as we all know, can either take you a couple of days or a year. <laughs> and that's how a lot of the data prep is. It just depends on how thorough and how detail-oriented you want to be. But there's no question that doing your data prep is going to make your migration so much easier. And the other thing to think about is the fact that if you're using a vendor, vendors do charge by the record. So anything that you can weed or you know, old patrons that you haven't deleted or whatever, the more you clean it up and get rid of things, the less expensive your migration is going to be. You know, why pay for stuff that you don't want? Customization and development, out of all the steps, this is the one that's really going to vary the most from library to library because some libraries don't really need any customization and others do a ton. One of the things that I'm going to highlight is this best practice for look for partnerships. The joy of open source is that you can work together with other libraries. The fact that you want a customization probably means there are other libraries out there who want it as well. And if you can find them and work together, it's possible that another library has staff with skills that your library doesn't, or vice versa. Or if neither of you can do it and you need a vendor to do it, having multiple libraries is going to cut down on your costs. So however it works, it's definitely worth doing. And that's one of the joys of open source communities is that you can find others who want the same things you do. Evergreen training. There are multiple ways to do training. You can do it by yourselves. You can you can use training materials that have been created by other members of the Evergreen community. 
you can use a vendor. I mean, there's there's just so many different ways to do all of these steps. This site is really to open up the possibilities for you. And then you go live and it's very exciting and everything is happy and by that point you're very ready for the migration to be over. <laughs> but even then, there are tips that we have that will make your lives easier even in that very last step when you think things are done. The next section is the technical support. There are vendors who support Evergreen. Our list is alphabetical. It is not meant to promote one vendor over another. There is no judging going on. It's purely a list of all the vendors that we found that support Evergreen. That was the one and only requirement for being included on the list. Documentation is important and there's a link to it. One of the things that is going to be the ongoing maintenance for this website is to update links and resources so as there are new versions of Evergreen these links will be changed to reflect that. And instead of being under the navigation bar the additional sources are to the right. So the Evergreen resources are all of the links that have been found on all the other Evergreen pages in one place so that if you can't remember quite what page you found it on you can come here and they're just all here. One of our team members has actually done screencast for installing Open SRF and Evergreen. So you can click on those and you can look at it step by step and follow along. There are other places including the main Evergreen page where they have documentation that tells you step by step but looking around we discovered that there weren't any videos of how to install these things so we decided to fill the need and now you have them. And the, Ever, and the Evergreen installation screencasts are the same. They're also available on our YouTube channel. See? And there are all of those. And then there are also the tutorials that I'm creating now to walk you through the website. So, there you have it. Okay. The next is the Evergreen community. As I said earlier, you know, the whole point of open source is the community that develops around these systems. These are all the main the main communication channels. And then you have a list of the Evergreen blogs and forums and other social media. And the really nice thing about this section is that if you were to go onto Google and try to find all of these sources, it would take you forever. And if you're like most people and you don't go more than a page or two into the results, there are some you would probably never find. So having them all in one place really does make it easier for you. And that concludes the Evergreen tab overview. I really hope that helped you. If you have any questions or anything you think we should add, feel free to hit the contact us at the top and fill out a form and let us know what you think. Good luck.